Okay. So in this video that I'm recording right now, um, we are going to do our motors and sensors setup. So I've opened up the Project Lead the Way because that's we use their template. Okay, so uh, Project Lead the Way template. So we got project title. So this is going to be the motors and sensors setup. So the basically what I'm doing here is I'm creating a file that I can use as my kind of my template going forward because I don't want to do the motors and sensors set up every single time I write a new file. So if I have a piece of uh, a robot, a particular robot, I'm going to write a few pieces of code for, I'll do this motors and sensor setup one time and then use that as my template. You know, I'll go file open, file save as from then on, and that way I don't have to do motors and sensor setup all the time. So I can also just copy the, the pragma statements at the top, but that's kind of getting a little bit too advanced for us right now. Okay, so uh, the team members is going to be just me. Okay, so go ahead and write your own name there. Uh, date, we're at the, oh my gosh, 10, 14, 13, time flies. We got period six. Okay, the task description, basically we're creating, create a template for, actually we're not really, it's not really a separate type of file, it's just a file I'm going to reuse. So create a sample for motors and sensor setup for the GTT test bed. Okay, so we have a particular piece of hardware. It has the motors and sensors are all plugged into the same thing. We're gonna use it for a number of different pieces of code, so that's what we're doing now. Okay, so let's go ahead up to robot and we're going to go to motors and sensors setup. We're gonna click there. All right, now we could go to standard model, but we're not gonna do that because it defeats the purpose of this video. Okay, so the purpose of this lesson is to, is to learn to put in any hardware configuration that you might use. So you might put motors anywhere in the Vortex or the Cortex controller. You might put sensors anywhere. So we need to learn how to name those and why their names are important. That's the purpose of this lesson. It's not, it's not to get our test bed working. We could do that very quickly. All right. So the first thing is here on motors. Um, we're going to name uh, the motor in port 2. So we're going to click on the motor tab. And for port 2, we're going to write motor. Oh, I'm sorry, we're going to write uh, left motor, um, I think that's right. I might have to switch it later. Anyway, so left motor I think is in port two. And I was wrong. It was the right motor, so let me switch that. Okay, so we're going to let right motor. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've written here. So we've written right motor, but it's interesting because we've made motor, the M in motor capital. Okay, now this is um, this is called camel case or camel writing. And what it is is that when you, you name variables, so basically we're naming the motor a variable here that we can then use. We can use right motor, you know, R-I-G-H-T, -I capital M-O-T-O-R. We can use that word that we've created to refer to the motor in our code. So when we want to turn on that particular motor, we just say, oh, turn right motor, you know, just like we've written here, on at a certain power. So why is, um, so using that capital M as an example of a, a convention, okay, so a naming convention. So basically what you'll find is, You'll, you might take some classes where, uh, where people say, oh, this naming convention is correct or that naming convention is correct. There's, it's not correct or incorrect. It's just utilitarian. So basically what it is is that whatever works, works. And what I mean by that is is that if, say, if you're in a certain organization like a school or you're working on an open source project or you're working for a company, basically whoever started that project or that company or that organization will start to a certain naming convention for the variables and you need to follow that naming convention so in this case the you know the um, people that created the test bed you know sample software decided that they were going to call motors based upon their position on the robot and then use the capital word motor afterwards okay so we're just going to go ahead and continue that naming convention being a flexible programmer means that you can conform to conventions in any environment. It means that, you know, we might, if we start our own project, we would make up our own naming convention, the, you know, the best way we saw how. I might say MTR for motor and then capital L for left, you know, or something like that. It'll just be up to me. In this case, we're just going to write right motor with a capital M for motor. 
Okay, now the second thing we have to do is we have to look at the back of our motor. So now we, we have to say, okay, right motor is going to be a particular kind of motor. So if we look at the back of the motor that's attached to our test bed, it's going to say, mine says two wire motor 9393. Nine, nine, okay, yours might say something different. So look at the back of the motor you're talking about and let's change it, you know, let's specify what type of motor it is. Yours might say two six, VEX 269, it might say 393, you need, to, you need to be sure that you're putting in the right one. Okay, so you just literally inspect the physical motor and decide what it says. Okay, next thing, let's go on to our analog sensors. So we have our analog sensors uh, and we have those sensors plugged into port 1 and port 2. Okay, our port in port one, we have our line followers. So we're going to select the type as line follower. We're going to have a lowercase line and then a follower. We're counting that as our second word. Notice our naming convention. Every time we have a second word, it's capitalized, right? So line follower. Potentiometer is in uh, the, um, the second analog sensor port. So potentio. Potentiometer. There we go. Okay, it's just one word, so it's lowercase. All right, finally, we go to our digital sensors. We got digital one and two, so we have um, we have our limit switch in uh, number one and our bump switch in number two. Um, it's an interesting thing. The main, you know, I said that uh, naming these is utilitarian, and it is. Uh, you want to watch out for really long variable names because you're going to get tired of typing them if you have to type them a lot. However, you want to balance the shortness of your variable names with their readability. So calling a bump switch S1 or S2 or S3, S4 is, defeats the purpose of human readable code, right? So you want to make it something that if somebody looked at the robot and then looked at your code, it would be perfectly obvious which switch that you're talking about. That's the goal of naming these, these uh, um variables you know that represent these pieces of hardware okay all right so last one we're going to put green that's our green led it's in uh, digital 12. okay and we're all set oh no we're not we put in got to put in the type the the type for limit switch and bump switch is touch and the type for green is vex led okay so our gtd test bed is all set up now this could be anything so when you build a robot of course you're going to put the <laughs> motors in whatever port you choose I like ports 1 and 10 because you don't need a motor controller if your motors are two wire motors. Um, and then your, you know, of course your sensors are going to go in, um, analog sensors and digital sensors are going to go in your, in their uh, separate tabs. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that finished. Uh, and when you're done, click OK and we'll take a look. And these are our pragma statements. If you ever, you know, forget what you name something, you just look up, oh, look, line follower is named line follower, potentiometer is named potentiometer. Also, if you want to get back to the, um, the editor for um, you know, the motors and sensor setup, you can actually just double click in this code and it will open it right back up. So if I double click anywhere on these pragma statements, it just opens that, uh, the motors and sensor setup back up. Okay, so go ahead and get your motors and sensor set up and good luck.